the top three DPS characters for Genshin Impact. That's what this video is about today. And if you're wondering, Barbara is not number one. All right, so number three on this list is definitely Kaching, and we're gonna talk about why while I do some damage here on some kind of basic characters to give you an idea. Now, Kaching has a couple of different builds, but there's one thing fairly consistent with it, which is the weapon you wanna choose is either the Flute or Aquila Favonia, the legendary, if you can get your hands on it. The reason being is she doesn't have much AOE damage other than her really her Q and a little bit on her E, okay? Gives her some AOE. But other than that, she's kind of a single target damage. Both the Flute and Aquila Favonia have AOE based upon that item as well and will allow her to continue to hit everyone in a circle or people near where she's hitting and kind of make up for that lack of AOE. Now, in terms of her moves, her passive that she gets innately just by being ascended is crit damage. So obviously you wanna put crit right on her like a berserker set and a crit right type of helmet or if you have good enough passives then you can put a crit damage helmet but she does scale based upon crit. As you can tell she does electricity damage because how the E works is on top of being a teleport it also does damage when you go through, it does a slash and then it tr changes your weapon damage from physical to electro. So there's two ways you can build her. You can build her uh, electricity, where you constantly activate the E and you get additional damage on the Q, because as I demonstrate here, her Q is electricity-based burst, and you can build that way. Or instead, you can build her based upon physical damage and run her with physical damage bonuses. You can, in fact, use either or. They are both good. Now, personally, I, I like the electricity build because I like to kind of do elemental combos myself. Uh, but you can build them either way. And you can see that she does pretty good damage and she might seem a little underwhelming when you get her early. If you get her in your like, you know, level 10 adventure rank or something, you get her in your early post. She can seem a little underwhelming, but keep in mind that she gets better and better and better the later the game goes and the farther you progress due to the way her passive works with the crit damage. Crit is typically something that scales into late game. Um, and splat stats are typically better early in games, okay? So keep that in mind. But you can see here that she does significant, significant damage, and this is against level 69 people. She is level 70, and this weapon she's using is not the Aquila or the, um, the Flute either, so I don't have the recommended weapons on her, but you can get a pretty good idea of the damage, okay? So personally, I think Kaching is number three, both because she has a little bit of mobility, she has a good iframes with both her E and her Q, and she does a lot of damage, okay? Significant damage, okay? Now we can look at her moves here real quick just to give you a really basic rundown. I'll show you what the artifacts I use. I'm currently using a Gladiator Sam Berserker set as much attack as I can get with as much crit rate and crit damage as I can possibly get. You can see here I'm using a crit rate helmet with a crit rate set, but then I'm also trying to, if I can get them, trying to get crit rate and crit damage secondaries. Here I have electro damage bonus as well. If we move on over um, to the weapon, you can see here I'm using the lion, uh, Lion's Roar, which does bonus damage against people affected by Electro, but I will replace that with uh, Aquila Favonia here, which gives additional damage in AoE, or you can also replace it uh, with this, with the one I was talking about, the Flute here, which also gives AoE damage as well. Both of those are very good. Her constellations are all very good. All of them do basically increase damage of sorts. Um, all of the increased damage versions are good and either increases the electricity damage or stacks up percentage damage. I do think if you get the constellations, the electric build is probably better. And a lot of her damage improves um, upon ascending her to level 70 and unlocking aristocratic dignity as this will increase her crit rate uh, with her Q or her ultimate ability basically. And that's where a large portion of her burst damage comes, especially that end hit there. So getting that end hit um, to 100% crit rate is quite important. Some annoying things with her is that the last attack on her basic attack will make her like teleport forward and can be quite slow. You can teleport off a ledge even. I like to cancel her auto attacks before you get to that last one. I find her first three auto attacks to be the best DPS until I cancel it either into an E or a dash. All in all, you just wanna focus on crit rate, crit damage and attack. You do that, you're gonna be doing just fine. This character hits a ton of damage if you pull her. 
Definitely want to max her. All right, so number two is actually Diluc. You might have been expecting this to be number one. And yes, he has an amazing Q that shoots a Phoenix, hits AoE, does a billion damage. His basic attacks do absolutely nuts damage. He uses Claymores, which is my favorite weapon in the game, and I think probably one of the best weapons in the game. And his base stats are nuts. He has access to the best weapon in the game, which is the Wolf's Gravestone. He has a triple hit for his E that you can use over and over again. Why is this guy rank two for me? Well, let's answer that when I show you rank one, okay? As it stands, Diluc's probably the most wanted character for the majority of the people out there. And, you know, to be honest, they have good reason for wanting him. Not only does he look cool, I mean, he's a, a redhead with a ponytail. I think most of those people are quite awesome. But on top of it, he does absolute insane damage due to the way his combo system works. He uses Claymore, so he hits very hard. On top of it, he has very good base attack, and his passive is crit rate, meaning you can build crit damage on him and still get max crit rate on him. He's quite a good character, and as you can see, he hits extremely hard, okay? Now his moves, his E is why he's so good. You can auto attack, E, then auto attack, auto attack, E again, a couple more auto attacks, E again, and it doesn't cancel your E. You can continue to do it and weave in the auto attacks between it. For that reason, it allows him to DPS very quickly as the E's are sort of animation cancels in the aspect that you can use an auto attack and E right after in order to get maximum damage. Now. Diluc is fantastic for more than just that, but because he's also a Claymore, he allows you to just play the game with him as your main character and never have to swap when either you're breaking rocks or trying to break Geo Shields or anything like that, okay? Claymores have that innate advantage due to the fact that they count also as heavies. They can break through shields. He also uses fire so he can catch shields on fire, which is quite nice. And fire is a very strong element in this game as it dunks on electric, it dunks on frost, even water you can get vaporized, which does damage as well. It's quite good against basically anything. Ultimate ability, if you look at it, it pushes everyone back and continues to hit them. The ultimate ability is one of the highest hitting abilities I've seen other than Mona's ult, and I've hit upwards of 15,000 just to level 70. When it comes to builds, I use a Gladiator's Finale and I use the Crimson Witch set in order to give me pyro damage as well as attack percentage. With the helmet, I go with attack percentage with crit dam and crit rate as secondaries, and I try to do the same as far as we go here. Attack percentage, crit rate, here we have attack percentage, crit rate. Once again, attack with a crit damage, crit rate. And then of course, a flower with attack percentage and attack. And I was not able to get crit rate on this one quite yet. These are the stats I'm currently using with the footage you've seen. All in all, he's probably the most fun character to play, probably the most overall useful, and probably the one you overall want to use the most. But I don't think he does the most damage. So number one, you may or may not have seen this coming, is actually Fischel, the Ranger. And there's a reason for this. Now, before I show you the footage and talk about her, you need to understand the complications as to why she becomes number one, in my opinion. Now, this does require full constellation. And to be fair, I am comparing a full constellation four star versus non-full constellation five stars. Both Kaching and Diluc are not full constellation. Uh, Diluc actually has zero, Kaching has two. So it is in that aspect, not an objective comparison, but it is what I would say a reasonable comparison as I believe it's about equally as hard to max out Fischel's constellation as it is to pull a Diluc or a Kaching. Considering how the Venti banner works, you get a lot of these, a lot of people have this character already. I would argue more people have a max constellation Fischel than probably have a Diluc at this point in the game. Okay, that's all great and dandy, but how does the character actually work? So she has a basic attack, can attack up to five times. The first one double taps really quickly. That's important to remember. The second one is she has a bird that gets thrown out, okay? It is a skill shot. She can aim it where she wants it to go. The bird does have limited range, okay? Both in placing it and range of the bird. That's also important to know. Now her ultimate ability allows him to be a bird, fly around, go through people, deal damage. And if you have the constellation, heal at the end, as well as at the end of it, places that bird again. Meaning you can stagger this so you can do, place the bird when the bird dies out because it, it's not 100% uptime with your E. You can then use your ultimate ability, place the bird again, wait for that to die again, place your ability again. You see, you, that's how you can keep the bird up. 
and why is the bird so important? But before we get into that, let's keep talking here. When Fischel hits a fully charged aim shot, oh, it brings down Thundering Retribution, dealing AoE electric damage equal to 152% of the arrow's damage. That's not why, it's cool to have. Great, charge shots are kind of strong. Let's look here. This is part of the reason why until we go into the rest of it. If a character triggers an electro-related elemental reaction, and keep in mind, that's if a character, not the shell, when Oz is on the field, so if a character triggers it while Oz is on the field, the enemy shall be stricken with thundering retribution, dealing electro damage equal to 80% of Fischel's attack. So she gets 80% bonus damage, and please keep in mind, this has no cooldown. It does not say anywhere can happen once every 10 seconds. This is something that happens. If you are attacking an electric slime with electro damage on Kaching, as you've seen, every single time, Oz is dealing 80% of Fischl's damage, every time. But that's not really where it ends at because the last constellation here increases the duration of the Oz, which is the bird summoning by two seconds. Additionally, Oz's attacks with the current character when present dealing 30% of Fishgo's attack is electric damage. I.e., this reads as whenever anyone on your team basic attacks while the bird's out, you hit for 30% of Fishgo's damage again, okay? So 80% and 30%, and Oz always does electric damage. So for instance, if you're attacking with Mona, literally every attack triggers an electro damage effect because she's wet plus the electric attack from Oz because every time you attack, Oz attacks his electro damage too. So it's a loop, it just keeps happening. So if you own this character and you have her max constellation and she seems kind of, eh, because you're only level 50 or something, she gets good at 70, okay? That is when this character gets crazy. Look look at the damage. You see how many times you're hitting? Plus look, you compare it with Barbara, constantly electrocharged over and over and over again. Now Oz is doing a ton of damage. Look, they're melting against a Barbara, okay? I love, that's a level 40 Barbara. And when you don't have Oz out, you still get bonus damage because of the constellation. See, you still get multi attacks because of that. Now you just alt, Oz is back up again. If I wanted, I could just go back on Barbara and get a million triggers of this. And even every time the water is hitting them, it's triggering too. Or I can just use Fischl and do a billion damage. Or I could even switch to my Diluc and get the overload damage over and over again from Diluc while I'm hitting constantly. You see, she's the best because not only does her herself do as much damage without anyone else, but she also makes the other people that are already almost as good as her, or maybe just as good like Diluke, right? She can make them even better. For that reason, to me, she's the number one. And the gear that I'm playing on, she has bad artifacts on. In fact, I'll even show you bad artifacts, a level 60 weapon, all the other characters have had 70. If you look at the artifacts here, she's got Elemental Mastery on, Random pieces, not fully leveled. Okay, check it out. Level two there on that one. This is 12. This is level four. You you see here in her weapon, it's only level 60, okay? Yeah. So the long of short of it is Fischel is number one, both because her herself does the most damage in my opinion, as well as when paired with the person who arguably could be just as good, if not better, right, Diluke. That's the one and two right there. When paired with him, it's even better. And on top of it, the best party in the game, in my opinion, is double fire, double electric. You can either go Binette for the heal plus Diluc, or you can go uh, Shang Li plus Diluc plus Kaching and Fischel. You get the fire bonus and the overload the overload bonuses as well. That's the most nuts team and it gives you it gives you the biggest range of mass DPS. And I, I really, in my opinion, think Fischel is nuts and probably scales like Kaching where she gets way better later into the game because you need mass attack percentage, which will carry on with your other character. There's not many characters in this game that basically do as much damage when they're off the field as when they're on the field, and she is one of them. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. I'm trying my hardest to come out with uh, Genshin content that's not bad, uh, that will actually inform you and will hopefully be entertaining. So if you find these videos, any of that, consider subscribing to see more of them. Love you and have a great day.